Cody Champagne. I'm a mechanic for Justin Barsha at TLD Gas Gas, and this is my bike. Starting at the front of the bike, full waffle grips for Justin. I think about a year ago, he broke his finger. They ended up switching to the full waffle for him to get better grip on the handlebars, and he's just never switched back from them. Billet throttle tube, and get the in-house billet throttle housing as well. Try to keep it as shiny as I can. Yeah, we have those made in-house as well. Just helps for rock dings if we have a massive rock or something come up and hit the master cylinder and end up digging the plunger or something inside, then the brakes end up failing. So the carbon guards help a lot for that. The Renthal 827 bend, fairly well even with the angle of the front end. And the bar mounts were at, I believe they're 38 mil uh, risers. So nothing too high, which complements his size. So it works for him. Now the only thing he's particular about is probably his, I would say his throttle play. He likes very little. The levers, yeah, they're just stock OEM ones. Uh, the right side, the brake lever is a little thinner than the clutch. He likes to keep them fairly even. The left side's not higher than the other, or the right side. They're pretty neutral, so. We go with the small uh, start button and kill switch. On the kill switch, we have a cover to keep him from hitting it with his chest and switching the bike off in the air sometimes. It has happened in the past, so it's just a fail safe for us to keep that from happening. Yeah, so it's a 22 offset, and we tried 24s and like quarter out races with them, but he prefers the 22s with standard races, and this is what we ended up with. These are the factory 52s. Our suspension guy, Hunter, definitely has him dialed in. He definitely does a really good job of getting our settings done very well for Justin, so yes, spring forks. So our whole shot device, at the beginning of the season, we started at a higher setting. With these new fork guards, we actually measure from the bottom because there's actually a spot for the measuring tape. Be pretty equal all around so we don't measure from the top anymore. So kite, whole shot device. We started at 185 in the beginning of the season and realized that we need to try and fix his starts any way we could. So we tried to bring the front end down a little bit more to help keep the front end from coming up. So we ended up going to, we are now at 170. We have a titanium front axle. Actually we have titanium front axle, swing arm pivot and rear axle. For wheels, we are running kite hubs and I believe they're OEM spokes, oversized rear nipples. We have the Dirt Star DID rims as well with the Dunlop all around. We tried a couple different fronts with him and this is the one that he prefers. A couple other ones just grab too much and don't let him sling the bike around the way he needs to. Yeah, so on the front we run a carbon rotor guard. The size of the rotor we're running a 270 mil with uh, Brembo factory caliper and front brake uh, master as well. Front brake line is OEM. Black box you see on the neck of the frame, that's just a GPS tracker. So we need the GPS to let us know where we are on the track in conjunction with the data that we take as far as like gear position and stuff like that where he is on the track. And and we get a lot of questions about the small box on the front fender. That is just an RPM reader for our start device. Justin engages it when he's on the line and it just reads where we need his RPMs at for the best uh, launch off the gate. Yeah, with Justin, we have to run oversized radiators all of the time because he runs the hell out of this bike and it gets way too hot. And the only way we can really cool, keep it cool is with oversized. But yeah, we run a 2.0 cap to keep from boil over at a higher temp. And then I have a temp sticker on the left side radiator to keep an eye on that when we're down on the line warming the bike up and yes we run a pin on the radiator cap just so we don't have an issue with it backing off and coming loose during racing so on the left side lower radiator hose we run an extra piece that's just basically a heat shield and also if he does end up bending the radiator in it doesn't end up melting the hose to the header yeah so we have an acro carbon skip plate love that thing they look so good when they're brand new but yeah it helps helps keep all the rocks from denting and digging our cases up and it does a damn good job at it yeah so we have uh, factory services in-house at KT him that does all of our engines internals can't touch base on that we have a kite clutch sleeve we actually just got a new billet uh, shifter for him with a bigger tip with that's round not squared off which he prefers billet shifter should be oem length just a little beefier and obviously looks nicer fairly level with the foot pegs engine hangers are just stock we've tried softer and stiffer ones and he prefers the oem Not a big grip tape guy as far as on the panels, but on the frame, we always have to have something, just a little bit of grip, but he also runs a little bit extra padding and, and rubber on the inside of his boots. So he gets enough grip that it's all he needs. Yeah, so we're running Raptor titanium foot pegs and we also have tie foot peg pins as well. We're actually trying something new this weekend with back five mil on the foot pegs, which we've been running standard. Give it a shot. He actually tested this past week with back five and he seemed to love it. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so for chain and sprockets, we 
We run DID, rivet link chain for racing. We run master link for practice. Uh, rivet link's just more reliable. We don't want to risk an issue with that popping off. As far as gearing, we run a 1453. Yeah, we tried a few different options. I think we first started out with a 54 that brought it forward a little bit more. But as far as the axle position, it really helps it to be kind of centered, especially with how he likes his suspension setup. Yeah, so the carbon rear chain guy that we have is also made by Acura. That thing does a very good job and seems to last a very long time. Yeah, so with the seat that we run, we actually started without a seat hump and I believe about four or five rounds in, we decided to go with a seat hump to try and center his body position to help his starts. And we haven't really gone away from it. Yeah, it's just a rental pad. Pleats, yeah, we run it from front to back and he wants a brand new cover. I mean, I prefer a brand new cover every week because we do new graphics and plastics anyway. So I'd rather the thing look good. He always wants a new seat bump because it does break down pretty easily. Yeah, so for the rear, we also run Kite Hub as well. OEM spokes with a DID star, Dirt Star rim. And we are also on a 120 rear for just Justin, we've tried 110s here and there, but he just always wants to go back to the 120, even when it's very ruddy. God forbid we break a spoke or anything. I know on a lot of the wall jumps to flat, that's always been an issue. And if a spoke breaks, it's always a fail safe to have the, the spokes wire tied to each other so they don't get wrapped up in the brakes, rotors, or sprocket. For our rear axle, since like I said, we're running a tie rear axle, we also have a factory axle block as well. And they always look really good on these bikes. OEM master brake with just a welded glass piece, OEM brake line, and a factory rear caliper. And the hanger is also in-house factory as well. Yeah, I would say this is probably the best exhaust that you can get for any bike is Acropovic. And the quality of their material is unmatched. Hardly gets scratched, barely gets dented. We don't even really have to run any guards on it besides the heat guard on the front header. We could run this thing all season if we needed to. The only problem is sound testing. We don't lose any power. If anything, it, it, it gets better when it breaks in. But yeah, that's tailored to our mapping. And it's one of the, like I said, probably the best exhaust in the industry. Our rear shock is obviously done in-house by WP as well. Linkage as well is actually in-house factory. As, it's not OEM, but I can't touch base on lengths and stuff like that. But yeah, so we run an OEM brake pedal, but we switched out the brake tip for a titanium one that has a lot more bite to it. Justin likes as much grip as he can get anywhere he can on the bike. That's actually just the engagement button for our start light that is on the front fender that I touched base on earlier. That just turns it on. And we also have two different actual start maps. The one, you can just click it once and it'll give us, I believe right now, kind of a mellow mellow start map. And if he holds it for two plus seconds, it'll start flashing and then that's when it engages it to a more aggressive start map. So a little bit more power off the gate on the throttle body. Then. Justin is probably the hardest person on a bike and I'm sure a lot of people understand that. And it shows because I have to change a clutch every time he comes off the track. Even though Henson makes the best clutch setup you have out there, the plates still can't handle Justin. <laughs> so the water pump cover and inner clutch cover is all acidized and it does help with heat dispersion and obviously helps with rock, rock chips and stuff like that. So. so we run ETS fuel, we have the mapping done for it and it definitely gets the job done for what we need. Yeah, so Throttle Syndicate does our full graphics kit. Honestly, it's one of the best kits that I've worked with. It definitely lays really well on the, on the plastics. Now, Justin likes his bike to be very well balanced front to rear. It has to be pretty much dead center for him and he can definitely tell if it's a little bit off in the front a little bit off in the rear and he'll definitely come in and tell us and make sure that we get it right for him. So all new chassis for us this year. Justin seemed to love it a lot right off the bat within the first week. He said that the bike definitely seemed to handle and follow itself better than the previous model. So the guys over at R&D definitely, definitely did, did their research and got it pretty dialed in for what it used to be. The bike handles a lot better. And like I said, it, it tracks better. He definitely enjoys this one a little bit more. As far as like learning the bike, it, it didn't take too long. And and honestly, I prefer working on this thing more than I did on the old model. So as far as air filtration, we run twin air. And for Supercross, we run a little bit thinner of a foam because we don't need it to handle all the dust that outdoors throws at it. So it just helps get us a little bit more power where it's an easy access. So there is one thing on the bike that nobody basically can see. It is hidden very well. and. It, very low profile is we have a backup start switch underneath the upper part of the subframe just above the shock body and it's just a backup start switch that a lot of people don't think about and it definitely can help you finish a race yeah there's no chance of that thing getting destroyed